Okay, so let's, this will probably take five or ten minutes, and then you guys can have a break. Um, but I basically pulled out the physical exam section from um, a, the, the cardiology sections of, an, of a board review test book. And let's try to see if you guys can figure out which, what the valve lesion is based on the description and, you know, the, the buzzwords that we talked about. Okay, so the first one. Cardiovascular exam reveals a point of maximal impulse that is laterally displaced. There is a grade 3 out of 6 holosystolic murmur at the apex with radiation to the axilla. An S3 is present. So tell me what the valve lesion is and what you identified in this question stem that helped you figure that out. Yep. Okay, so uh, sounds like mitral regurgitation. and why? S3, yeah, awesome. Yeah, that's perfect. So that's mitral regurge. Okay, any questions about that? Okay, next one. Cardiac exam reveals an S4 gallop at the apex and a grade 3 out of 6 mid systolic murmur over the base that accentuates with Valsalva maneuver. Yeah, Hokum. So who said that? Now you, now you have to tell us why. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. That's exactly right. Um, and so somebody walk us through the Valsalva thing. So what does Valsalva do and why would the murmur increase with Valsalva? I hear a voice, but I don't see it. <laughs> ah, there it is. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Everybody get that? Sweet. Okay, so Hokum. Um, all right, so grade four to six early systolic murmur that increases with inspiration and is best heard in the second left intercostal space without radiation to the carotid arteries. Nice. Why? So I heard inspiration. So it increases with inspiration, which narrows it to the right side of the heart. So we're talking about a right-sided heart lesion. It's in the second left intercostal space, which as we know is a pulmonic valve area. That's your second clue. There's no radiation to the carotids, because otherwise you might think, is this AS, you know? Um, and by the way, it's not, it's not common that a pulmonic stenosis would be grade four out of six, because right-sided murmurs tend not to be as loud as left-sided murmurs because it's a, it's a lower pressure system. Having said that, this person may have long-standing uh, pulmonic stenosis and might have RV changes and increased pressures and, stuff, and such that the RV pressures become like the LV. Um, but it's funny because it's the only one with a you know, four out of six or louder murmur, and it's the one that it's, uh, it's a right-sided lesion. Um, but anyway, you guys are 100% right. Um, so it's a systolic murmur that increases with inspiration, second left intercostal space of pulmonic stenosis. Nicely done. Next one. Uh, cardiac auscultation demonstrates an irregularly irregular rhythm, a loud S1, normal S2, and an extra sound heard after S2 near the apex. A low-pitched diastolic murmur is heard following the extra sound. Mitral stenosis, yep. And what are your clues? Irregularly irregular is their first clue, because they often present with AFib, remember that. There's a loud S1. If they tell you there's a loud S1, it's going to be mitral stenosis. This extra sound after S2 is what? Opening snap, low pitch diastolic murmur. Boom. These are all word for word from uh, board's exam, you know, prep book. So that this is exactly what you're going to be seeing, um, I hope. But in general, that's what they, <laughs> these buzzwords are going to be, you know, these test questions are going to be littered with these buzzwords that will help you figure out what the lesion is. So mitral stenosis, good job. On physical exam, blood pressure is 150 over 40. Carotid upstroke is brisk and collapses quickly. There's a grade 2 out of 6 uh, early systolic murmur noted at the second right intercostal space. A grade 3 out of 6 high-pitched decrescendo diastolic murmur is noted over Herb's point. There's evidence of nail bed pulsation. 
aortic regurg, but there's two murmurs. So aortic regurg often, a lot of people don't realize this, but it, it actually, people think it's just a diastolic murmur, but there's a diastolic murmur and a systolic murmur. Anybody know why? So good thought, good thought. Uh, it causes a flow murmur as well because it's like the garden hose analogy. So um, even though the aortic valve is opened up, you know, there's no stenosis of the aortic valve, because of that regurgent volume, now you have this huge volume of blood that's going back through the aortic valve, and so it creates a functional sort of AS-type murmur. So there's a systolic component to it as well. Um, so good, you guys clued in on uh, the, wh what is this? Wide pulse pressure, so they're, this is, um, they're describing uh, Corrigan's pulse there. Um, and then the systolic flow murmur, high-pitched decrescendo diastolic murmur, Herb's point, Quinky's pulse. Nicely done. Any questions about that? Okay. Cardiac exam reveals a sustained apical impulse, normal S1, and a single soft S2. An S4 is present. There's a grade 3 out of 6 early systolic, early onset systolic, late peaking murmur that is heard best at the right upper sternal border and radiates to the left carotid artery. Carotid pulses are delayed. Yep, aortic stenosis, good. A grade three out of six late systolic apical murmur is heard that radiates toward the left axilla. Moving from a squatting position to a standing position increases murmur intensity. What did you say? Yeah, so mitral valve prolapse with mitral regurg. Um, and uh, this is, uh, again, the intensity of the murmur doesn't change, but this is word for word from a review book, so I went with it, because you might see that, but you guys know better. Uh, but yep, you're dealing with a late systolic apical murmur, radiates toward the left axilla, so you know MR is involved, and then squatting position, uh, squatting to standing increases murmur intensity. So what happens when you go from squatting to standing? What happens to the volume at the, le um, on the left side of the heart? It decreases, exactly. Yep. Good, so both of them, mitral regurg and mitral valve prolapse. Cardi there's only a couple more. Cardiac exam reveals a loud S1, normal S2, and an opening snap. What is the answer already? Mitral stenosis. There's a regular rhythm with a grade two out of six holostolic murmur at the cardiac apex, radiating to the axilla, and a low pitch three out of six mid-diastolic murmur following the opening snap that accentuates pre-systole. So what else is there in addition to mitral stenosis? Yep, exactly. So regurg, stenosis. Yeah, I think the last one here. So cardiac exam reveals a grade two out of six holosystolic murmur at the lower left sternal border that augments with inspiration. Evaluation of the JVP reveals a single large pulsation. There are track marks present in the antecubo region of the arms. Yep. Exactly right. Nicely done. That's it. That's all we got. Questions? You guys can clap. Go ahead. 